if someone with sensitive skin saw this thing and tried it, their skin would be gone. For this time only, during this period of quarantine, I am going to be responding to all the DMs inquiring about skin. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Sumeya and I am a beautician from Kenya. I help students, business owners, and customers within the beauty field by giving them tips, tricks, and advice. As you guys can tell from the title of today's video, we are going to be talking about skin types. I'm going to be talking about the different skin types that there are. I'm going to be covering how you can know what sort of skin type you have. I'm going to talk about how changes can occur in it. And at the end, I'm going to discuss a few do's and don'ts, just like for general skincare routines. So let's get into it. The first skin type that we have is a normal skin type. Now, this is basically the ideal skin type that everybody wants to have. The skin is the skin is very balanced. It's neither too oily nor too dry. They have their very fine pores, like very small. Like you can barely see the pores unless like you go really close looking into them. The texture of the skin is very smooth and you won't really find any blemishes or acne or anything of that sort on the skin. So this is basically the skin type that literally everyone dreams to have but very few people actually manage to have it and it takes a lot of care to make sure that it remains that way. However, it is very likely that as a person grows older, if they have normal skin, that their skin will go dry. But with proper care and a proper routine, you can prevent that from happening too soon if you have normal skin. The next skin type that we have is dry skin. Now, dry skin um, occurs when your skin is producing less oils and this oil is called sebum. And what this oil does is that it helps to retain the moisture within your skin. Now, when your skin is not producing enough of it, it basically doesn't have that shield over your skin to retain the moisture. So as I'm sure you guys are aware, we are constantly losing water from through our skin. Like perspiration is one of the biggest ways that we lose it. But since this is happening and the skin is not producing enough oils to retain whatever moisture it can it leads to the skin getting very dry because it's not producing the oil and that what that's what ends up leading to dry skin the level to which your skin is dry varies from person to person some people will have a lot of flakiness some people will have their skin like getting very itchy some people will feel like this tightness some people will probably like feel their skin getting a little rough at points so it really varies from person to person. But one thing is the same for all people who suffer with dry skin, that this is because your skin is unable to retain moisture because of the lack of sebum. Um, a dry skin is normally the most common between the elder people. Although you will still find younger people who have dry skin, it's normally more common for people like in their 50s and higher. The next skin type we have is oily skin. Now, oily skin is when your skin is producing excess sebum. This normally happens because of things like stress, genetics, hormonal changes, medication. Oily skin normally has um, larger pores. It has a very reflective um, look to it basically it looks very slick it looks very greasy it has like a very glossy shine when you have oily skin acne will be um, one of the issues that you will deal with it's not going to be excessive but um, some people do end up having like severe cases of acne and stuff but um, when you have oily skin it's very likely that you will suffer with acne the next one is combination skin and combination skin is a mixture of the previous two or three skin types. So basically you have a T-zone. The T-zone is basically your forehead and your nose sides and this can extend out down coming through here, down here, like down to the nose over there, 
down here. And this is considered your T-zone. Now, your T-zone is normally oily when you have combination skin and your cheeks and chin, well, sometimes your chin isn't, but sometimes your chin and your cheeks are dry to normal. And the, the level to which they are dry and oily will vary from person to person. And the main thing about combination skin is that you are dealing with different skin types at this point and combination skin is very normal it's actually the skin type that the most people tend to have and finally we have sensitive skin now sensitive skin is a skin type that reacts very easily to different products that are used on the skin um, common occurrences that you would see with sensitive skin is that it tends to turn red, it gets inflamed a bit. Sometimes even small things like washing, like a person washing their face can end up causing the skin to get irritated. So this skin is a skin type that requires a lot of care, a lot of um, expertise, a lot of guidance because it reacts to almost anything sometimes it even reacts to certain foods that you eat like if you eat uh, candies with like artificial colors and flavorings the skin ends up reacting to that and sensitive skin is a skin type that a person has to be really careful with as to what they apply to their face how long they apply it and a whole routine is very very specific for a sensitive skinned person because everyone's skin and just like previously is very different and sensitive skin has to be handled with the utmost care all right so now that you guys have a general idea as to what skin type you would probably be having from the information that I've given um, there are some things that I would like to cover based around taking care of your skin so first off the first thing I want to mention is when you're getting yourself into a routine be sure that you talk to a specialist first. And by specialist, I don't mean someone who is an enthusiast. I mean a specialist. The difference between an enthusiast and a specialist is that an enthusiast is someone who through their own interest has just gone on to do things related to skincare, but their routine is going to be based off their skin and they will advise based off the stuff that they have used they will recommend products and stuff but they will recommend it to you because it's like this has suited my skin they won't really have a better understanding as to how your skin is working they won't be understanding the history behind your skin whereas a specialist will know the questions to ask you in order to be able to advise you better so when you talk to a specialist, they will ask you for your skin history, products which you've previously used, medications that you're currently on, all of these little little things which can end up having an impact as to how your skin is looking right now and how your skin can end up looking in the future. And that's how the skincare specialist will advise you. So you can either visit a dermatologist or you can visit a beautician that does a lot of facials and they can advise you on a skincare routine to follow. If it is in the level of the beautician, she will be able, they will be able to advise you. However, sometimes it goes on to a much deeper level. Like sometimes the acne is so severe that you can go to a beautician to get help or sometimes your skin is so sensitive to a point that it's just reacting to every next thing or sometimes it's that your skin is too dry and it's flaking off so much that it's no longer just like like a dry skin issue it's more of like eczema or something like like a medical condition and with that you would have to visit a dermatologist or another type of or another skin specialist basically and talking about following um like enthusiasts and all I think another very important fact that you guys need to keep in mind is not to follow random videos that you see online, okay? I know it's very tempting that you see someone doing something and it looks like it works amazing for them. That does not mean that you go ahead and try it out for yourself without consulting someone first. Make sure you consult a specialist first. 
I remember some time ago, um, I'd seen a video on Instagram and someone had mixed up um, this homemade face mask and it was basically a bunch of dry ingredients and they put apple cider vinegar in it and then they mixed it up and like applied it to their face and I was just like if someone with sensitive skin saw this thing and tried it their skin would be gone and like it would just mess things up for them completely they would be su like suffering with burns like apple cider vinegar is very strong it is not something that you want to apply to your face lightly so just be really careful as to what you are going to be trying out on your skin make sure you discuss it with a specialist if you prefer doing homemade treatments, specialists can advise you on that. What you could, what you probably have in your kitchen, there are specialists that can advise you as to masks that you can make at home based on your skin. Another thing that I want to discuss is that your skin type can change. And I don't only mean like with age, like how I mentioned earlier that normal skin can go on to become dry skin. I mean even things like travel and changes in the weather and climate can change your skin. I'm someone who has combination skin. And when I am in Mombasa, I tend to have more of an oily T-zone and drier cheeks. But when I go up country to like Nairobi, my skin goes totally dry and dull. See, so something small like just changing from one city to another city within the same country has changed how my skin is because it goes from combination skin to dry skin from just a small change in the climate and so over time your skincare routine will change your facial routines will change you won't get the same thing every time your skin will learn to adapt and with that you will also have to adapt your routine now i know some of you are probably sitting there saying but samaya i don't have the cash to be able to visit a skincare specialist what do i do well for this time only during this period of quarantine I am going to be responding to all the DMs inquiring about skin. I have a highlight in my Instagram and I'm going to link my Instagram down below where you guys can take the quiz, find out what skin type you have and I will advise you. This is something that I'm doing only for the quarantine period here like during the quarantine period that is taking place here in Kenya. I will advise you as to the skin type that you have based on those questions. I will advise you as to what products you can use. Follow my Instagram. I'll leave it down below and just follow me and just over there in my highlights you will find the little tab saying skin type quiz. Answer those questions, send me those DMs and I will talk to you guys and help you out during this quarantine period. Alright, so that's all we have for today's video. Um, if you guys have enjoyed this, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Uh, don't forget to follow my Facebook page. Um, of course, like I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions about today's video, if you want to know more about your skin type, feel free to DM me. I'll be leaving all the links to my socials down below. And let me know what you guys want to see next. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!